Jessica, the Rainy Day Stitcher, and welcome to my channel. Uh, this is my place where I talk about the different crafty things that I'm up to, which is going to mostly be cross-stitch. Um, I've been starting to get into knitting, I'm excited to start some English paper piecing, so I'm very welcoming of all different kinds of stitches, but my sort of dominant craft interest, if you will, is absolutely cross-stitch. Um, so, welcome. Uh, welcome especially to anyone who is new. Um, I am loving getting to interact with other stitchers via, um, you know, the comments here on YouTube, but also Instagram, and so um, I'm just happy to be part of the conversation. So today is May 22nd, and if you are new to sort of the cross-stitch world, the whole month of May is almost like a holiday for cross stitchers. So people sort of approach this in several different ways. For me, it means a lot of starts. So I have a whole bunch of whips, which is a work in progress, something I'm in the middle of to show you. Um, I also have um, a moderate, for me, amount of haul. Uh, I have a little bit of knitting. I have um, also some plans for what's going to happen in the next few weeks. Um, and so I've got a lot of things to show you today. So let's get into the stitching because like that's why you're all here. So I have been keeping up with a couple of sows, which are stitch alongs, you know, stitch alongs, um, during the month in addition to all my new starts. So the first one I'm going to show you is the Dark Queen of the Sea. Uh, oh my gosh, is she fabulous. I'm going to step back so you can kind of see her. This pattern is by Autumn Lane Stitchery, and I have her on uh, Bewitched by Under the Sea Fabrics. Leslie at Under the Sea is sort of a co-sponsor of the Dark Queen. And every month, uh, we've been getting a new part of the pattern. So, um, you know, last month, moving my hand we got the coral over here and the trident um i went through and added let's see if i can get the sparkle to show up some uh crinic blending filament in with my trident to give it a little bit of metallic sheen um before that we got this really cool um crown which i changed up based on some people in the facebook group I turned my corners into uh, stingrays. I think Pauline is the one who came up with that. Um, but so each month we're sort of adding some on. So this month for May, we had this ginormous uh, tentacle knit. So I'm going to insert a picture here of what the full month looks like. And so you can see I've, I've gotten a lot done. Um, I haven't counted my stitches, but probably about 75 to 80% in. So I just have to add in this little bit over here. But it's also, you know, the 22nd. I have less than 10 days uh, to get this done, to sort of be on track for starting the next part, which will come out on June 1st. So I'm not too worried if I get behind just a little bit on this because I've done such a good job staying on top of it, but I uh, really want to keep up with this. My kiddo loves the Dark Queen of the Sea. In fact, they asked me a couple weeks ago if I would amend my will and explicitly state that they get the Dark Queen if something untoward happens to me, which is really funny because I only have one kid, so they get everything, right? And they're 18 now, so like, they just get it. So, um, but yeah, they're like, please, Please redo this. I'm like, we'll see. Um, but anyway, so I'm loving the Dark Queen. Such a cool project. The other stitch along that I have been keeping up with just a little bit since you last saw me was Peruvian cats. Oh my gosh, I love it. They're so cute. So I will insert a picture of what the Peruvian cats look like um, sort of as a completed pattern here. All right, so yeah, this is Cat's Reflection Sampler by um, Peruvian Flare on Etsy. I'll make sure that I put a link in the description box down below. 
and I am doing this on 16 count, oops, it's sort of falling apart, I need a board, um, 16 count riddles by Live and Die LA, and then I paired that with this amazing, let's see if I get this color, like raspberry and orange sherbet uh, floss, also by Valerie at Live and Die LA, um, and they're so cute, I love the Peruvian cats. Um, I teach Peruvian art as part of my world art class, and so um, I can't wait to put this in my office and see if any of my um, students sort of recognize that Andean influence. So uh, Anna is putting out another Peruvian pattern, but I'll talk about that um, in a little bit when I get to sort of future plans. So in addition to the cells, there's two other things that I have participated in this month that aren't really cells, but sort of like stitcher projects. So one is what we call Dark 13. So basically, on the 13th of the month, we pull out some Halloween stitching and we sort of work on that. And uh, most months, at least the last like two or three, I've totally blanked and I've forgotten that uh, it's the 13th and that I should pull out my, my Dark 13 project. So um, this month I remembered, so I have it to show you. So this is, oh my God, I'm, I love this so much. Uh, Sleepy Hollow by Glendon Place. I'm doing it in all of the called for colors and threads. It's on a fabric that was specially dyed by Valerie at Live and Die LA. Can you tell I'm a Valerie fan? Yeah, she's amazing. Um, so she did, this was I think her first one where she organized and said I'm going to specially dye a fabric and she sourced uh, the silk and the beads, and so there's several of us in her group that have been working on this. Um, this project, though, has been giving me some some issues. So, um, you know, I, I not only have I not worked on this in a few months, when I have worked on it, I didn't really talk about it because I was doing a lot of frogging. So, I'll insert a picture here of what the whole Sleepy Hollow pattern looks like. All right, so in February, I guess, I had gotten almost all of the moon done in this really, really, like, beautiful lemon-lime color by uh, Water Lilies. And I realized, this was my first time working with a variegated floss, so something that has multiple colors. And initially, I had thought that I wanted the stripes to go up and down. And then, as I got to really looking at it, I was like, no, no, the stripes need to go this way. So I ordered another skein because I wasn't sure if I would have enough to do the moon a second time. And then I ripped it all out. It took me a couple of days. And then I started putting it in and I just have this little bit down here. And then I got to looking at the horseman's cloak. And I realized that, you know, initially I had done the sort of cotton DMC and then I had sort of worked on the Krennic, which is the sort of sparkle down in the edges of his sort of like lining or his edging of his cloak. And I realized it looked really, really wonky, like seriously wonky. So I pulled out my sort of key and I took a minute and I realized I had swapped my colors. So the sort of, it's a little hard, I'll come right in, but there's a darker color and then like a lighter green and I had them flipped, so the highlights were the darker color, and then the like darker color underneath was the lighter color, and it just looked, it looked not right. So ripped it all out, I'm ripping out Krennic. This metallic thread is like not the most fun thing in the world, um, but now I've got it all squared away. It's all situated, so moving forward, I can just keep sort of going along. Uh, but all of that's on me. Uh, yeah, but I love this pattern. I think it is so cool. I can't wait to get into the border with the little bats and the jack-o'-lanterns, and I think, I think it's going to look really good. May or may not be done for this Halloween, but we'll see. Similar to, um, Dark 13, cross-stitchers also, many of us, pull out a holiday pattern to work on the... 
excuse me, I'll have the hiccups on the 25th. So uh, last month, you know, it's been a hot minute, like I said, since I filmed a video. Hadn't gotten to Jolly 25 yet or Mary 25 or whatever it's called. Um, but again, I remembered. And so I pulled out this. I don't have a lot of work on. I started this on June or June, January 1st as my new year, new start. But I'm working on Celtic Snowflake by Northern Expressions Needlework. So I am, you know, slowly working out on the arms of the snowflake. And then last month, let me get in real close, I did my first ever sort of smearness. So I started in on some of the specialty stitches, which the camera, I don't I have my window open to try and get some natural light. It's not really picking up the colors very well, but are these really, really pretty colors here. I have the the flosses here. They're all in these like dinky dice silk. Uh, and they are just stellar. So, um, here we go. You can kind of kind of see this color. And so, uh, yeah, this is gorgeous. It also has a lot of crystals. Some, I can never say it right. Shavarsky, Schwarzkys. Um, really pretty sparkles, and um, definitely probably not going to be done in time for Christmas, but. Uh, that's okay. Uh, I'm very much a process stitcher. I love the time and the um, sort of m almost meditative zen process of like working my way through the stitches. Um, and eventually I'll have something pretty to put on my wall. So when I haven't been working on these projects, I've been starting the thing because it's Stitch Mayhem, um, also known as Stitch Mania, but um, I don't want to, I don't want to use that word per se, that as someone who has a family with lots of people who struggle with mental health, um, manic episodes are not fun, and they're not um, something to celebrate. So I have instead embraced the term uh, Stitch Mayhem, which I think uh, and there's also someone doing like Mayfly May stitching because you like flip from project to project. There's there's some other things that are gaining traction. Um, but for me, I will totally admit I have whip envy. I'm a joiner. I like to join in projects. Uh, I like to buy things. Uh, so I oftentimes have a lot of haul because when I watch Floss Tube, I like take all kinds of notes or. Um, I have some stitchy friends that we like swap ideas back with each other and they're like, oh my gosh, did you see this was on sale or what, what not. Um, but I'm a new stitcher. This, this week right now actually is the one year anniversary of when I started my first project. And so I don't have a ton of, a ton of whips. Um, I want more. I know it's really weird, but I do. So for me, I am starting a bunch of things. I didn't have a plan because I knew this month was going to be really rocky with end of the semester and the kid and all kinds of stuff. But I have a giant pile of things that are like ready to start. And so um, many days I just dig through and say, oh, this looks fun and starts it. So I have several things started uh, and I'm probably going to start several more in the next, you know, week. So let's, let's show you what I got. So the and these are in no particular order, so even though when I say first, it's more the first thing I'm going to show you. Um, and this <laughs> it's going to be a little hard to tell what it is, but my first project, I have my little arrow, there we go. I marked it with an arrow so I could tell which way was up, but also uh, which way was which which way. So this, I know it doesn't look like anything. Most of these aren't going to look like anything. So here we have a green blob. What is this green blob going to be, you may think? Um, the green blob is from my Owl Forest kit, so let me pull out these flosses because OMG are these like amazing. So I've only used one color so far, um, but oh, look at these, oh my god, I can't get them to lay flat, aren't they gorgeous? Let's see if we can like get them on the green linen, oh they're so pretty, I know they're like a hot mess, but would have. I don't have time to stress over making them sit all nice and neat. Um, 
But this is, if I have a good picture, I guess I'll show you the one on the box. The um, Princess and the Frogs version. So you can sort of see what I've got is the little bit of her dress here. That's where I am in the middle. And uh, what I love so much about this project is I actually really like frogs. And so I love all the little frogs and the lily pads around the outside. So I have to say, not only are the Owl Forest floss is amazing but this kit came with like literally everything you need it came with the flosses needle minder the linen even a needle everything um and it was really reasonable in terms of price for what all you sort of get and um for the quality and it's all packaged really nicely and the pattern is big and easy to read and yeah I, I'm digging the Alforce. I have one other Alforce kit that I haven't started yet. Um, I'm also going to order the flosses, I think, for the, it's about all the crinkles and the like farty noise from the Ziploc bag. Um, but I'm going to order the flosses, I think, for the 100 Owls, which was a free stitch along they did in the fall um, that I haven't started yet, but I love owls, so that's definitely on my list. What else have I started? Oh, so. <laughs> This is kind of fun. So uh, this is part of a stitch along that I am excitedly starting. Um, so the, the stitch along is not project specific. So uh, it's a birthday style, which is hashtag cross stitch BDSM. Bear with me, right? I mean, and, and can I just say like, that's like the best title ever for a style. Um, but the BDSM style is Backstitch doesn't scare me and blends don't scare me. So uh, it's it's an invitation to do a Russian pattern because Russian patterns are notorious for their blends and their intricate backstitch. So um, I'm working on this adorable little stitch by Cross Stitch Alexa Kiss on Insta or on Etsy, and you probably can't tell what it is, but it's probably 30% done. I will insert a picture of what is going to be here. OMG, it's a mana shrimp on a little bookshelf. Is he adorable or what? So you can't really tell what he is yet. Um, but what I've got here is the edge of the shelf and then like his legs and his little body here. And he'll just keep filling in. And this already, this tiny little thing has like three blends already in and it doesn't look like anything but this like weird blob because so much of the image is the back stitch so um that being said the mantis shrimp is one of my kiddos like all-time favorite animals and so uh this is their request of what i make for them to take with them when they go off to college so um i'm going to be working hard on the uh, mantis shrimp which is like the coolest thing ever and i should say he's also so here's my idea um, cause he is kind of little and even my kid was like, Ooh, he's really little. And I was like, yeah, so I think what I'm going to do, but shh, don't tell him if anyone knows Max, like keep this on the DL. But I think I'm going to take him and if I have time, reverse him and put him down below. So we have one, one mantis shrimp going this way and one going this way. And then in the middle, I'm going to put, um, a quote probably from the oatmeal on their, um, blurb about the mantis shrimp. Um, cause that's, that's how we learned about him and how that became one of our favorite animals. What else have I got? I'm pulling these out. Oh, this project I'm really excited about. So this one you may or may not be able to tell what is going on here, but um, I have this start for a pattern called Dyslexia by Taylor and Cromwell. I'll insert a picture here of what the full pattern looks like. So you can see I sort of have intelligence, kind of. Um, it looks like intelligence to me because I have dyslexia. So um, I am doing this on Sherbert by Be Stitch Me with these beautiful pink flosses by Fiberlicious uh, that were one of her cottons of the month a few months ago, um, I think in February. And uh, I'm loving this and I can't wait to get this stitched up. and put it in my office as a reminder, not just to me, but to my students, that those of us who have brains that work a little bit differently, 
doesn't mean we're not smart. It doesn't mean we're not capable. And it's not a marker of our intelligence. Uh, so anyway, that's fun. And I also got these really cool, uh, let me pull them out. In addition to sort of the gorgeous overdyes, I also got these beautiful sort of um, purple beads. They're hard to see a little bit. We'll see if the camera picks them up. Um, but they've got like an iridescent sheen to them. Um, so I'm going to bead the center of the flowers. I'm also going to use some little green beads from a stitchy box. So I'm going to kind of snazz this one up um, just a bit so that it it sort of is a a marker of how important the message is. And so it's pretty and in my office and all that kind of stuff. Sorry about all the crinkliness. Uh, see, I told you I started a bunch of things. What have we got? Oh, we've got two projects in here. Um, one is part of a stitch along. Um, this is hosted by, I think it's, it's hosted by Michelle Bendy Stitchy. Um, we can sort of see here, we've got the start of a phrase, although I don't have the whole thing. Let's fold this over so that there's not as much light coming through. Um, this is a pattern by Dirty Custitch. And I will insert a picture of what the whole pattern looks like here. Yeah, the whole damn system is wrong. So, um, you know, I think Bendy Stitchy is calling this like the whole system is wrong, Sal. Um, and the minute I saw it, I knew I wanted to participate. So, uh, this I'm doing on standard black Ada. And then currently, this color is a Stitchy Box Silk. Um, that I'm using for the words and then I'm going to do um, this piece as sort of coordinating with another work so I have some flosses picked um, but one of the main colors of sort of the flowers I'm going to use um, colors that coordinate with Havana by um, Karen Waterlilies and I'm going to do that because the other piece that lives in this project bag is this little guy. This is my start to uh, Modern Folk Embroidery's Black Lives Matter pin cushion. So my thought is that these two pieces are going to be companion pieces. So I'm going to do the top and bottom little motifs of the um, of the pin cushion in this Water Lilies Havana which is gorgeous. Can you get, look at this colors. I mean, it's not, it's a little blown out, but I mean, I guess since it's these greens and purples, and then I'm going to do the Black Lives Matter, which goes around the edges in that stitchy silk robin's egg. And then my dirty cut stitch, the whole damn system is wrong, is going to sort of pull out these colors to put in the floral border. Um, so I started both of these for May, but also, um, for some social justice messaging because I think that's really important too. We're making our way through the pile. Uh, oh, this one, totally different vibe. Uh, this is a piece I started. This one actually looks like a thing. So I have a respectable start to a piece that was in a magazine in, I think, 1987. I have it right down. Yep, May of 87, and it's called Gathering Honey. Uh, and so I have the little beekeep house down here at the bottom. It's so cute. Um, none of the back stitching yet, just the regular stitching, but I'll insert a picture of what the whole project looks like here. Isn't that cute? Oh, so cute. Um, my mom is super into bees, and so might keep this or might give it to her for her new apartment. I haven't decided yet. Um, but I might be keeping that one because it's, it's really cute. I'm not crazy about the quote. I'm not a big Bible verse person. Um, but there's a great quote about bees from Victor Hugo that I was thinking about doing. Or um, there's a, a quote in Virgil that uh, is describing the Carthaginians as bees in a beehive and it's like this precursor to Rome and that piece or that sort of text was part of my translation exam for Latin so I've, I've kind of I don't remember the actual words but I sort of remember the sentiment so I might pull out the Latin and, and put that in there I haven't decided yet 
All right, so I've got two projects in this bag, which was a giveaway that I won from um, Alexa, who's another uh, Colorado stitcher. Um, I love it. It was part of the Stitch Asia project. So um, in here are my mermaids. So the first one I have, again, teeny tiny little start. Let me get it all folded up so that you can sort of see. Um, this is my very first uh, Bella Filipina mermaid. You can see it's just a tiny, teeny little start. Um, this is the, uh, what is it? Enchantress of the Abyss. I'll insert a photo here of what she will look like when she's in all of her glory. Yeah, so what we have here is just a little bit of her beautiful fuchsia hair. Um, and I love this fabric. This is Valerie Live and Die LA's The Deep. Um, and it's blown out here. It's like this super deep, vibrant blue. Uh, and I got it in an opalescent, and it is just so yummy. Um, so, so yummy. So I'm, I have that one. But I also started another mermaid. Uh, this one I'm doing um, as participating in a stitch along. Oh, I should have marked it with an arrow. I think this is the up. I'll figure it out when I go to stitch on it again. Um, hosted by Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. And this is Meridian Mermaids, or uh, Meridian Cross Stitches, um, Kristen the Arctic Mermaid. Uh, and it's her butt. Yeah. Maybe it goes this way. I guess I'm not really sure. I just remember I was in the middle, and her middle is like her hips and up into her bum. So. We got a little bit of mermaid bum action happening here. Uh, and this is on an unnamed fabric, again, by Valerie, live in LA. It's gorgeous. Um, but I'll insert a picture here of what Kristen will look like when she's all finished. So, yeah, I just received the silks for this. I still need the beads and the clinic, but um, the one that I worked on this, it was so fun because even though there's a lot of colors and a lot of color changes, at least the section I was in, it was it was like each chunk was about a length of floss. So you would like thread your needle and do your stitches and then thread your needle and do your stitches. And it was really, really lovely. Uh, so those are my mermaids. Love me some mermaids. Love me some not mermaids too. And then we come to my last Stitch Mayhem start. Um, and this one is for my Black Needle Society. I have a sideways. This has words so I can orient it for y'all. And here we go. I am starting the Frogwarts year one. Um, I will put a picture here of what the whole sort of project is going to look like. So I am signed up for Frogwarts year two. I'm so stoked. Uh, we should be getting the pattern in the coming weeks, I think, because we get a chance to start it before the retreat, and then we've been assigned to houses, but you were able to sort of order year one as just the pattern, which is what I did, so it's Aloha Mora, and I have the little birdie bots every flavor beans, and the start of the um, broomstick, the Nimbus, was it Nimbus 2000, I forget, the Harry's First Broom, um, I have worked really hard, and I've sourced all of the amazing over dyed colors on my floss ring and uh, I have more fabric to start year two and yeah I'm excited totally stoked so those are all my starts plans uh, I have a few things that I am hoping to continue to work on so I'm going to keep working on the dark queen of the sea next section comes out June 1st I'm going to keep working on my Christmas and my Halloween stitching, you know, one day a month. I know the Halloween one, or Halloween, the Christmas one is coming up this week. Um, my birthday actually is coming up. My birthday is June 1st. So I'm going to do a new start. Well, I'll start some more things too for Mania, probably at least, you know, four or five more things. Uh, and then on my birthday, I am going to start my Chatelaine. Like that's going to be my. My birthday start treat to myself. My hair is driving me bonkers. It's all humid here today because it's rainy. Um, and so I have it here all kitted up. Um, I'll insert a picture here of the Weeping Willow Keep, which is what I'm going to start. So yeah, 
it's not really that exciting, but I've been like slowly gathering up the silks. I've got some of the beads, the petite treasure braid, all of it, um, and this gorgeous fabric by the Stitch Me. The sort of like deep creamy beigey color that I think is going to set off the the Weeping Willow really really lovely. Um, so in addition to that, I am going to do two additional styles because I'm a joiner and I can. And even though I'm turning 40, I'm still young at heart, and so like. We can load up with 90 years worth of stitching, it'll be fine. So, um, Anna, Peruvian Flair, who did Peruvian Cats, was so grateful that people loved Peruvian Cats. She did one with birds, with like pelicans. Oh, it's so cool. And she's doing it as a stitch along, and you can still sign up. So, find, um, I'll put um, Anna's stuff in the description box down below, but find her. There's a form, you fill it out. Um, and you'll get the lovebirds. So I'm trying to decide. So feel free to let me know if you have a preference here. So option one, and I wanted to sort of complement Peruvian cats. So let me get Peruvian cats back out, right? So remember it was this like deep periwinkle blue with this orange and this pink. Now the colors don't have to be exactly the same, right? But I like that effect of some of the motifs being in the like multicolor variegated and some I'll match it to DMC colors. So, and I also kind of like the color family, kind of. So my first option is to use some more of this sorbet, which it's a little bit orangey or pinky or it's got some pink modeling. Oh, here we go. Here's a piece where you can get the pink modeling. And then this overdyed floss unnamed by Valerie Live in Dye LA, which is this darker peach and this blue, so sort of like a reverse in some ways of the Peruvian cat. Or use this unnamed blue Ada, which I have for several projects happening. Um, and then this gorgeous overdyed electric eggplant by Spiralicious. So, um, and again, I'll sort of pick out, probably not the yellow because I don't like yellow, um, but pick out maybe a green and like a purpley blue to pull out some of the motifs for the lovebirds. So if you have any strong thoughts over which one, let me know. The other stitch along that I've both already started and am going to start again is Sarcy Girl's Pandemic Sampler. So I will uh, insert a picture here of what Pandemic Sampler is going to look like. So I already started this. I started this when um, it was, I think, Michelle Benny Stitchy, but I could be wrong, started a style on it that was called um, hashtag, uh, it's been, oh, sorry, not Benny Stitchy, it was um, Emily at Eclectic Possessions, but it was, um, it's been one hell of a year style. Um, and what I got done, here, folding it around so you can see it more easily, there's the top. Here we go. So what I have done is just just a smidge, just a bit of bit of this deer and the sort of some of the central flower motif. And I hate this fabric. Um, this is some linen that I got at Joann's, and it was like cut all wonky. I edged it in masking tape because it was falling apart, but it was cut like this, like on an angle, and like one piece was real wide on the side and then it got really skinny and um it like is falling apart and I'm, i don't like it so i'm gonna toss it because i don't have very much done um and i started over in part with this sort of new style that's happening which is the um 2020 pandemic style and i'm gonna put it on this swiss chocolate by i know it's in this package um it's a little hard to see but by valerie of course, right? Live and Die LA, um, which was a fabric of the month in um, August. And it's this like reddish pinkish brown. And I think um, with the floss colors here, I have not all of them, but most of the floss colors here in this bag. So I'm just going to sort of grab them. You can, I know this isn't like a great floss toss, but you can kind of see. And then again, this, I think the like oranges and reds and blues, I think that's going to look really good. So, 
um, that is my plan to restart Pandemic 2020 by Starcy Girl. Um, and I think it's Diana. Diane. I'm horrible with names. Um, who's sort of restarting the cell um, has divided it out into portions. Um, and so we're going to try and do a portion a month. And by doing that, we should have it done, I think, by February of next year. Um, and so that'll be nice to, like, have have a goal. And I'm, I'm keeping up with the Dark Queen. So I think having that kind of monthly section will really sort of keep me on track with that piece. So those are my plans. I have some hauls. Um, if you've watched my videos before, you know I tend to have a lot of haul. I have significantly less haul than in previous videos, but still a respectable amount, right? So I got a couple of needle minders. So this one by Needle Say More is of the Pet Cemetery book cover. I love Stephen King. Pet Cemetery is one of my favorites. I was um, getting a needle minder as a gift for a friend, and I didn't want it to travel alone, so I got one for me too. And then I got this really cute one by Pinder Way for my Kristen the Arctic Mermaid. So it's this sort of, um, there we go, uh, it's like a diamond that's also a um, iceberg. It's got polar bears and narwhals, and I thought that was really fun. I received my nest egg from 3 Elf Threads. So I'm not going to go through all of these. It's sort of, um, it's this program where you get, I'm signed up for Classic Color Works and I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 of them, more or less in alphabetical order. Um, and so here I'll sort of twist them up and you can sort of see. So they don't sort of, they're not a colored family because they're in alphabeticals. Uh, this looks like a lot of L's and um, it's like this one is, I love this name, Lobster Claw, right? Um, last month we got Goldfish, um, but yeah, so we've got L's and K's. Um, so we're sort of slowly working our way through and then eventually I'll have um, in my stash all of the classic color works. So those are a lot of fun. I got a little bit of stitchy kindness. So a colleague at work who I had said I was doing cross stitch finished a pattern and gave it the sort of packaging to me. So to make this cute little bookmark that says I am really a mermaid. I thought that was adorable. So it was a kit. Uh, she used the materials so it's just a pattern but I can source some stuff. My fiberlicious fabric of the month came of uh, lavender mist. This linen, isn't this gorgeous? I'm not sure what I'm going to put on it, but um, man, Gwen is knocking it out. So beautiful. Um, I received my Stitchy Box Stash Delights. So um, it, I have it all packaged up in my adorable little um, sorry bag. So you can sort of they come in these beautiful silk bags that are um, repurposed saris that are um, sewn by um, women in India. Came with a little notebook so we could keep track of our stitching. And there are some lemon candies I've already eaten. Um, some little shavarshki, um, which I might use in my um, Peruvian lovebirds style, maybe, because there's this really warm sort of um, ambery color, which I thought might look good with some of those flosses. And then we have, of course, why everyone, why you would want this is the, is the silks, right? So we've got um, two stitchy silks. This, um, what is it? Electric grape is fabulous. I love it with the spearmint too. Um, we got a dinky dyes. Blue Daydream, another Dinky Dyes Citrus, which is just really fun, um, a Fiber on a Whim, this one's a cotton pink lemonade little nugget, uh, which is really, really cool, and then the Flower Silk, which you can cut differently to make different colorways in um, Spring Candy. 
So, they, you know, again, they're not really a set, but they're a good way to sort of round out your stash. Uh, oh, and a tiny little needle minder. So cute, this little flower. And as someone who still has a whole stack of Mill Hill kits that are in process, I love having a little wooden needle minder that I can use on my Mill Hills. So, the other thing I received was from Bestitch Me. She did a project where um, she sourced the new-ish Bella Filipina Cleopatra. You can sort of see it here. I'm sorry it's in the cellophane, but if I take it out, I'm never getting all this back in. And then she had some fabric choices, so I picked Eternal, which is this brown with sort of red splotches on it. Um, and that's going to look really, really good on the even leaf. But I don't have any of the other supplies sourced, so i um, not sure when I'm going to start it. In no time soon. Um, and then I got a whole stack of stuff from my my Chica Valerie. So um, I got a few Mill Hill kits. So I got a larger one and then a smaller one, um, both in sort of fall patterns. I love having these. Um, I'm hoping to start traveling again as uh, you know the pandemic sort of loosens loosens its grip on humanity and so being able to throw these in my bag on an impromptu trip it's got everything you need in it um i ordered this gorgeous shannon christine pattern of these hanging succulents um i did her hanging bubbles a few months ago um this one has much fewer beads like much much fewer beads but i thought it was sort of fun it might be interesting to sort of hang on the wall and then swap with the bubbles she also did a thing for the Mirabilia. This was a new one a few a few months ago of Echo Lake. So I got the pattern and the bead pack. Like the Cleopatra, no idea when I'm going to stitch it. Um, and then she did one also somewhat like the Stitch Me's where she did this Autumn Lane Stitchery Lunar Witch. And then a coordinating fabric to go with it. Um, this one I might start sooner rather than later just because all you need is eight DMC colors um, and I probably have most of those so if I get itching to start a Halloween-y thing I can pull this out um, without too much trouble. My last piece of cross stitch haul is and I'm not going to do anything other than show the box but I got my Rainbow Stitches uh, Black Needle Society box so I know people are still getting there I don't want to spoil anybody's excitement uh, let me just say yeah it's a good one. Um, I am loving the Black Needle Society so much. Uh, this is the first box I've had in hand. Uh, I accidentally sent my Stitching on the Go box to Austin, to my spouse, and he never forwarded it to me, so it's just sitting there waiting for me. And at this point, he asked if he should bring it for graduation, and I was like, well, I'll be heading to Austin like the first week of June, so just hold on to it. Um, so this is the first one that I've had in hand, although I have ordered several things from their vault. I sort of put together my own Jane Austen box and my own Date With Your Stitching box. Um, but now I've already signed up for the Pirate box. I have signed up for Frogwarts, right? As you saw, I started the pattern. Um, and um, the Stars Hollow, Autumn and Stars Hollow box, and the new one that they are sort of currently gearing up towards is the cozy, I think it's cozy stitching. Um, but yeah, Black Nail Society is slaying it. Their boxes are so good. Um, I also signed up for the Halloween box and I think my mom is going to get me the Christmas one for my birthday. So yeah, loving me some Black Nail Society. So that's all I have for cross stitching. If that's all you're here to see, um, Thank you so much for stopping by. I do have a little bit of knitting and a little bit of um, English paper piecing haul. So, uh, my mom, I think I've mentioned this before, is a big time knitter, and so she's been teaching me how to knit. So, um, I think in my last video, I had just finished a scarf, my one, a scarf, my scarf, and since then I made a hat. Oh my God, I love this hat so much. Um, I forget what the pattern is, but this is a ridiculous yarn that I got at my LYS. I learned how to make a pom-pom and went and bought a little mini skein of coordinating color oops, to make my little pom-pom. And it's like, yay, I made a hat. I love it. Um, of course, now it's not snowing anymore, but next winter 
it'll be it'll be good to go. And of course, once you do your requisite scarf, your requisite hat, then you got to start in on your requisite first socks. These socks, man, have been kicking my butt. So I am working off of a pattern by Cafe Yarn Creations um, called Vanilla Shortbread Socks. And I think I started it four times before I finally made a sock. And I more or less followed the pattern exactly. And it fits great, except it's about an inch and a half too long. So I'm thinking it might fit my husband, which is why I haven't taken it apart yet. Because um, I want him to try it on and then I'll know like what size to do for him. Um, but it's, it's a fun pattern and it's, I found it, I mean, it was challenging, but really reasonable for like a first, a first stitch. So, um, and this is in Chasing Rabbits fiber in the color uh, fern, it goes like that, which um, I also got at my LYS. So after I made my ginormous sock, I, um, I, I shouldn't say that, it's, you know, it's like an inch too long, so it's definitely too big, but it does fit on my foot. Um, so I immediately cast on to my DPNs and I started and I'm, I'm working through, um, there we go, the heel, the heel flap, uh, for my second sock in my, in this adorable little manatee DPN. Man, I gotta tell you, like, one of the reasons my cross stitch haul is so much less is because I have been doing the knitting haul. Uh, no joke. So little DPN, stitch markers, not a ton, but a handful, um, you know, little project bag, my little sock bag has owls on it, um, it's definitely eating into my, <laughs> into my crafty budget. Uh, once I finished that, I have bought all kinds of other yarn because it was LYS day um, a couple of weeks ago and I did a little mini yarn store crawl and hit up four shops here in Denver um, and got a little something at each one. So in addition to the knitting, I randomly decided, I shouldn't say randomly, but it feels kind of randomly, that I wanted to learn how to do English paper piecing quilting. Um, I don't have a sewing machine anymore, although I might try to get one this year after my kid vacates their room and I have some space. I ordered a um, Tula Pink charm pack and a little pillow English paper piecing kit. And I was like, that's all. That's all I'm going to do because, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and keep this at a reasonable level and, and you don't need multiple quilting, hand quilting projects in addition to knitting socks, in addition to 20 cross stitch whips, right? And then I, I had heard, right, through the grapevine that, you know, if you see a fabric or a quilt thing that you like to like get it because unlike these cross stitch patterns um you can't find them you know once they're gone they're gone they usually just do one run so i got an ad from englishpaperpieces.com for this quilt kit and then it went on sale and so i got this whole kit for you know a really reasonable amount of money um and so here's what we got we got the pattern here's all the pieces it's called polar stars isn't that gorgeous? And it's for like a lap, lap quilt. And with the kit, I got the pattern with the pieces. I received the templates, the little, the little ceramic, or not ceramic, the plastic templates so that you can fussy cut a little bit. A set of um, fat quarters. Look at these colors. Aren't they gorgeous? So yummy. Um... <laughs> even a little like holder bag to hold your things in and then this this was what really got me the like backing fabric look at this gorgeousness this like blue and teal agate I was like oh yum oh yum um yeah and it came with enough to do both the what do they call it this is it the sashing where you go between your your pieces um, as well as the backing, like it's, it's all you need. Um, so it's, it's all the materials except for the thread. And so I went ahead, they had a set that were these, um, I kind of opened it so you can see, but these, um, Aurifil coordinating colors. So those were on sale too, so I snagged them. And then, um, just the, 
the fluffy bit. Clearly, I'm a new culture. I can't think of what it's called right now. Um, but in the middle. And, uh, yeah, that's all I need, and I'll, I'll have this. So, um, I'm not sure when I'm going to start it. I'm going to do the pillow first. But um, I have it. It's ready to go. I'm super excited. And uh, it's going to be good. So, if you've stuck with me this whole time, thank you. Thank you so much for um, popping over. And hopefully, I will see you in the next two to three, two to three weeks. Thank you, everybody.